Hello. Welcome to another Recaptivate. Today, we feature the Korean movie Lucid Dream. This is about Dai Ho, a young investigative journalist with great integrity. He always believes to stand for truth. With that, he made a few enemies by exposing several corrupt politicians and businessmen. Dai Ho is also a very doting single father to Min Woo. One day after work, he picks his son up and spends the day with him at the amusement park. Because of his job, he gets paranoid about people around him. As he takes a photo of his son on the merry-go-round he goes missing and then notices he is tranquilized. After he falls to the ground, he sees a man walking off with Min Woo but is debilitated to run after them. No ransom is demanded after the abduction which makes him think it is an act of revenge by one of his enemies. He attacks everyone he suspects to get them to disclose where his son is. Three years passed after Min Woo's disappearance, and there is no development. The investigators have been instructed to forward it to the cold case team, but Chief Song thinks otherwise saying the case has not expired. Chief Song talks to Dai Ho and reminds him he should not be attacking anyone he suspects for his son's disappearance. And tells him they are doing their best to find him. But Dai Ho tells him his best is only when they bring his son home. As he surfs the web he finds a strange method that was used abroad to help catch a kidnapper. It is called lucid dreams. One of the physicians who administers it locally happens to be his friend, So Yan. He heads to the clinic to talk to So Yan for help but she says this is only used for therapy. He begs for her to use it on him as a cure. She too is afraid of the side effects as it may cause cerebrovascular issues. He promises to abide by the rules. Before she could say no again, he angrily hits the table and begs her to understand the pain he is in. With much persuasion, she lets him. She tells Dai Ho, once in the dream, the second hand of watches stop moving. She hands him a chime bell for him to press when he is ready to awake. Ten minutes is the allowable time. More than that could be dangerous. He goes back to the day Min Woo went missing at the amusement park and scans the crowd for anyone who looks suspicious. He traces his steps from the moment he bought food. He sees the man in black again and decides to chase him. As soon as he is cornered and asks who he is, he disappears, then Dai Ho wakes up. So Yan tells him lucid dreams should not be altered. The dream will be crushed and will be dominated by imagination. This should be left alone if looking for clues. Once he mentioned about the man who suddenly disappeared, she says he is a shared dreamer. And other patients have also seen him and should just be ignored. He asks So Yan to do it one more time. This time he focuses and sees a tattooed hand of the abductor. Dai Ho goes back to the drawing board. He tells the chief of what he found out. Dai Ho goes back to another round of lucid dreams to look for the person wearing gloves who may have poked him with the needle. He is able to describe the person and a sketch artist creates the image. Dai Ho teams alongside the police and works long nights to search for this man. Dai Ho then goes to his friend, Sung Pil, a private investigator and hands him the sketch. Sung Pil promises he'll do everything to help being indebted to Dai Ho. As he leaves the office, he notices blood dripping from his nose. A suspicious man is also watching him from afar. He returns to lucid dreams again and there he recalls the food stall owner may have seen the face of the tattooed man. He asks him if he could do a round of lucid dreams to help describe the man who took Min Woo. He tries hard in his dream to look at the man's face but is unfortunately covered by his hat. Then he remembered he paid with a credit card. The investigators track the payment and narrow it down to three men. They search the database. Kyung Wan Choi was the only one that had a record. His mugshot showed the tattoo and confirmed he was the abductor. The only problem is he lies in a coma at the hospital after a car accident from two years ago and could possibly die anytime soon. They hit a wall in the investigation again. As they take a break for dinner, Chief Song tries to encourage Dae Ho as mentions his daughter who is very ill with a genetic heart disease, who struggles to say a short sentence in one breath. They try to assure each other that things will get better. 
The chief once again tells him he will not give up looking for Min Wu. Song Pil meets with Dae Ho and tells him they were able to track the man in the sketch, named Yu Sang Man and tells Dae Ho that he is on his way to Tokyo. Dae Ho rushes to the airport and sees Sang Man. He is able to chase him down and forces him to talk. But all he says it was Kyung Wan Choi who did everything and he was only an assistant. And that Kyung Wan Choi killed Min Woo, which Dae Ho did not believe. The police arrive and arrest Sang Man for kidnapping. The following day, Dae Ho receives word that Sang Man committed suicide in prison. He is still baffled, as he doesn't have any connection with the two men. The chief says someone must have ordered it and that someone could be terrifying for Sang Man to take his own life. Dae Ho's nose bleeds again showing side effects of the procedure. As he goes back to lucid dreams, he finds Chairman Cho, owner of Hanbit Corp who was suspected of stock manipulation coming out of the clinic. So Yun reveals that he is a psychiatric patient there and the biggest sponsor of the facility. He is being treated after his son died in a car accident. Incidentally, Dae Ho reported about his son skipping his military duty. Dae Ho also finds out the chairman's son's blood type is MKMK like Min Wu. One day, Dae Ho follows the chairman, being suspicious of him. On the elevator, in the reflection, he sees the dream chaser, Yong Yun. So instead, he looks for him. After he finds him, the dream chaser leads him to his office. There Yong Yun reveals that he hacks into someone else's dream or in short he hacks into the lucid dream system. Dae Ho begs him to help him get into the kidnapper's dream, who is in a coma. Yong Yun warns him that if he won't know how to escape out of someone else's dream he will either live forever in his dream or worse. If the kidnapper dies in the process, he will die too. So Dae Ho goes into Wan Choi's dream. He sees Wan Choi's car crash and a man peering from above the site. Dae Ho tries to run after the man but escapes in a black car and is able to get the plate number. He then is transported to another part of Wan Choi's dream where he is in a rundown building arguing with another man, refusing to do what the man wants on the phone. As they leave, Dae Ho sneaks in the room and discovers photos of his son and a list of names that he tries to memorize. The men return and catch him snooping. Dae Ho presses the button to wake himself up but he is unable to. The dream was the day before his son's kidnapping. One of the men points a gun at Dae Ho to kill him, but the dream chaser enters and saves him from getting killed. When he goes back to reality, he writes down the names and hands them to the chief to check the significance of these. He then goes to his private investigator friend to check the plate number and who owns it. He also asks how it would be possible to get through the chairman. Dae Ho snatches the chairman during his lucid dreams appointment. His bodyguards chase him down. He takes the opportunity to scare the chairman to make him admit his involvement in his son's disappearance. But he insists on his innocence. The chairman's bodyguards arrive and beat Dae Ho up. Chairman says even if their sons had the same blood type, it wasn't possible for him to take Min Woo as his son died before Min Woo vanished. And how he regrets not doing much to keep his son alive. Dae Ho apologizes to the chairman and begs for his help. Dae Ho also tells him he is willing to die just to have his son back. To prove his sincerity, he attempts to jump off the building, but is stopped by one of the men. Chairman tells him someone broke into his office. Most likely someone needing blood or an organ, on the list, Dae Ho remembers a hospital and a name. He goes there and finds a girl named Song Soo Jin who happens to be the chief's daughter who was terminally ill, needing a heart. At the same time, his friend calls him revealing the owner of the car he saw in the dream. It was the chief's. Turns out he ordered the abduction of Min Woo to kill and harvest his heart for his daughters. As he leaves the hospital, the chief and a man are at the back of his car. Chief tells him Wan Choi hit him for two years and when they caught up with Wan Choi, he got into an accident. So they don't know where Min Woo is, since Wan Choi has been in a coma. He only did this for the love of his daughter. They incapacitate Dae Ho then push his car in the lake. Sung Pil and his men are not too far away, as they track Dae Ho. 
They find a car slowly submerging into the lake. They help fish him out. Unfortunately his friend gets injured fighting the chief's bodyguard. The chief's daughter's condition worsens and is now in a coma. He promises to find Min Wu for her to get a new heart and asks her to hold on a bit longer. Chief Song goes to the facility to ask So Yun who could help him with dream sharing. The unsuspecting So Yun gives him Yong Yun's information. She then gets a hold of Dae Ho and tells him the chief is on his way to get into Kyung Wan's dream. It was only then that she learned that the chief had something to do with Min Wu's disappearance. She says she'll try to get Dae Ho in Kyung Wan's as well. The chief forces Yong Yun to do the process. Meanwhile at the hospital, they are trying to revive Kyung Wan. Roads are crumbling and buildings are collapsing. Chief Song gets to Kyung Wan first. At gunpoint, he asks where Min Wu is. Dae Ho arrives. They beat each other up. Kyung Wan gets a hold of the gun and shoots the chief. But surprisingly another chief song appears in the dream. The building continues to shatter. Dae Ho pleads with Kyung Wan to focus and tell him where his son is. Kyung Wan apologizes and tells him he didn't have the audacity to harm a child so he ran away and took Min Wu to a Catholic church orphanage on an island. The floor underneath them collapses. Dae Ho tries to hold on to him. Kyung Wan apologizes one more time and lets go of his hand. Before Dae Ho could press the chime bell to wake up, Chief Song arrives and shoots him and gets a hold of Min Wu's location. The chief then attempts to click on the chime but he doesn't wake up, not knowing how to manipulate dream sharing. They continue to fight and the bell falls. Dae Ho jumps off the crumbling building. The chief is buried under the debris. Dae Ho gets a hold of the gadget and concentrates on moving his brainwaves to get back to reality. In the next scene, we see a well-shaven Dae Ho in a car on his way to the orphanage. A nun meets them and takes him to Min Wu who is now also sporting a new haircut, he recognizes his dad. Father and son are happily reunited. Thank you for watching. Please join our Recaptivate community by clicking on the subscribe button. Let us know in the comments how we can make the channel better. Have a wonderful day.